the only thing that will be effective is actually working at scale, ramping the, the whole gamut of things people are doing up, um, and dealing with the chronic ecological issues, which are fragmentation, which are you know, abuse of fire regimes, and which are too many ferals across the landscape. And they're issues that can only be dealt with at a landscape scale, so that's what we're doing. Uh, Gondwana Link, I think, is a fantastic program uh, in its, the scale of its ambition. Uh, the notion of uh, trying to uh, connect and restore and repair biodiversity uh, from the southwest forests through to the great western woodlands um, is, a, is a very powerful idea. I first heard about the Gondwana Link project 15 years ago mm -hmm. at a conference and thought it was just such a bold kind of goal, especially this whole idea of almost getting government out of the way and just working with private landholders and philanthropic sources of funds. And, you know, to try and create major connections in the landscape um, between national parks and existing bits of bush on private land. Uh, Gondwana Link just means to me that there are, no, there are enough people interested in conserving the connections between uh, all the vegetation types and uh, which is really important for conserving the wildlife and the species endemic to the area. You think about what it used to be like and uh, it was a pretty magical place. Uh, you know, the, the original inhabitants in this country, I, I, I was quite certain they would have been their Garden of Eden. And if we can um, achieve even a, a little bit of what it was like in the past, I think we've, we've done well. We're now standing overlooking the Rangers Link area um, to the east of me, where there's a very active program happening with, with the local groups. And to the west of me, there's the, the, the Lindsay Link and the Forrester to Stirling's bit happening. And for me, it's just so exciting to see the original concept grow and be happening in all those areas. And I think just the visual nature of the projects, you know, that it's this big swathe of, of connections across the landscape. And I think there's tremendous opportunity um, to, for private landowners to work uh, together with uh, the big national parks uh, and nature reserves and really make a difference in terms of biodiversity conservation. When you live in an area, you, you get to see it in all its moods and they are many and varied. Every day is an adventure. Most of the work is being done with four of the local landholders. Definitely farmers have a deep respect for the little plot of earth that they're on and they do want to protect it, but we just need to be taught how. We will go out of our way wherever possible to support the aspirations of the Noongar and Naju people. It's because it's their country. Um, they have a culture that we need to learn a lot from because ours hasn't worked well in this country. Mountains and ranges are quite uh, rare in southwestern Australia. M most of this land uh, is, is a relatively subdued plateau, uh, flanked on the west by the, the Darling Scarp and then gradually rising as you head northeast into the deserts. The rocks you see immediately here at the Prongarup are 1.1 uh, billion years old, a quarter of the age of the earth itself. The Stirling Range rocks are 2.2 billion, so they're getting up to half the age of the earth itself. Here, the Prongrups and the Stirling Range, uh, each of different geology and fundamentally different stories, they have lots of interesting plants, animals uh, that take advantage of the microclimates offered by the mountains. Um, we, we have what we call islands of biodiversity, which uh, uh, carry over from ancient times. It's one of the richest areas on the planet in terms of plant diversity. So this is like rainforest. <laughs> in terms of the richness of species that, that you affected it's so diverse so so isolated from the rest of the world um, you're discovering um, unknown things on a yearly basis to a biologist uh, like me this is the nearest place to heaven on earth wherever you go there's a need for conservation because we we're losing species all over the world we really need to devise uh, uh, a way of living sustainably and I think the, the vision would be that in a hundred years time we've worked out those systems and applied them.